Hello everybody and welcome to a super special and actually ridiculously interesting video today which I know is a bold statement because we're talking about a motherboard something I don't know, that isn't the most exciting thing in the world. But the reason that this video is different is because this is a B550 motherboard, which as we know can tend to get quite expensive these days, but this costs around about £110, which makes it the cheapest B550 motherboard you can buy. So the question is, buy it or don't? I was going to say buy it or should you? That doesn't make any sense. Netgear's Nighthawk Mesh is on a mission to end Wi-Fi woes once and for all. If you're someone with a lot of devices, then this awesome kit has everything you need to get started. It uses the super speedy Wi-Fi 6 technology to deliver the fastest speeds to all your connected devices of today and tomorrow. There's four times more capacity and is 100% backwards compatible with all your current devices. Check it out and learn a little bit more down with that link below. So let's do a little unboxing then of a motherboard. I know, incredibly exciting stuff. You're going to get things like an IO shield in here because obviously it's a very budget board. But importantly, this one actually comes with Wi-Fi. There are two variants. One has AC Wi-Fi and one doesn't. And the thing is, when it comes to motherboards, they never translate into better gaming performance. I mean, you know, I'm sure there might be a couple of frames here and there between something that's ridiculously high end and something that isn't. But, I mean, no one's going to upgrade their motherboard for more performance. It's not really something I would traditionally worry about. The question that I have with this board, though, is more what do you get on it and what are you missing out on? Because I'm not saying you should go for the cheapest motherboard uh, that you can. I'm saying that you should consider the cheapest motherboard. And right off the bat, I can, uh, I can already see that this is a little bit different to a normal motherboard. There is really not much on that at all. I've never seen a motherboard with so little things on it. I mean, you've got a little bit of sort of heat sink, I guess, for the VRM, but in terms of serious overclocking, if you're gonna grab something like a 5950X, this is probably not gonna be the right motherboard for you. But in theory, it should support it, it should work. The Wi-Fi module is literally just that. It's a Wi-Fi module that's installed. That's the difference between the AC version and the non-AC. But the first thing really that catches my eye is the fact that there is only one PCIe SSD slot. And the good news is that this is PCI Gen 4, but if you're going to want to upgrade later, I guess you could probably just use an adapter card and put it in these slots, assuming that the bandwidth is there. But again, I don't see why not. The chipset itself doesn't actually support Gen 4. So if you want to go for multiple Gen 4 SSDs, SSDs, you're not going to have the flexibility of doing so. So while it might not matter at the moment that you only have one slot, in the future I would wager that it probably will, but I mean for the sort of person that's going to be buying this, I guess it doesn't really. Turning to the I.O. and there's not really that much here. I mean again, I think for a budget gaming PC this doesn't matter. We've got, what's that, six USB ports on the back, so if you're not going to daisy chain things then yes, you're probably going to run into some issues at some point, but you know, you can just get adapters. These are USB 3.1 Gen 1 by the way, not Gen 2, so they're not going to be quite as fast as some others, but again, you know, you're sort of getting the theme here, this doesn't really matter. That is really strange. That is really strange. It says on the back of the box that it has eight USB 3.2 Gen 1, but then on the board itself, it says here USB 3.2 Gen 2. Something else that might sound a little bit strange is the audio on this board is you're likely to maybe get a little bit of interference, I guess, and not have the highest quality chip on this board. So if you're gonna use analog headphones, this could affect you. But the way around this is just to use like a USB DAC or of course USB headphones or headsets or anything like that should solve that problem. I'm trying to think of other things really to mention. I mean, in terms of fan headers, how many do we have on here? One, two, three, four, five, six. So six actually, that's surprising. That should be fine, I think, for pretty much every build. Was it worth leaving that bit in the video, me counting? That's the level we've got to on this channel now. We don't have any USB-C for the front, which is hardly surprising, but if you're gonna get a high-end case, bear this one in mind. We do also have addressable RGB and old school RGB. The thing that you do need to be aware of though, and something that is very, very important, I can't stress that enough, is that if you have a look nice and close up here, it says P1.1. Why does this matter? Why do you want version 1.2? That's because that is actually when these boards will start to support the latest generation of 5000 series CPUs. So the significance is that without any way to flash the BIOS because there's no fancy BIOS flashback where you can just put a USB drive in and the motherboard itself will flash without needing a processor, 
you're going to have to get an older CPU to actually put in this before you can even use it with one of the newer Ryzen chips, which is going to be very significant and it is going to catch a lot of people out. It is nice that you can see because in theory you could buy it and then return it, but I mean that's quite a lot of hassle, isn't it? But anyway, that's exactly why I'm here to give you the lowdown, all of that information so you don't make mistakes for yourself and obviously are a little bit more educated, I guess, when it comes to PC gaming and computers and things. So what we're gonna do today is actually test this motherboard with, what's this, a 3600, which is probably what you'd wanna pair it with anyway. We're gonna use an RTX 3060 Ti, and fundamentally, we're also going to use a 980 Pro, not because I think that this is the right pairing for this motherboard at all, I mean, completely the opposite really, but because this is actually gonna be able to test the full bandwidth, I guess, of the SSD and the board to see if they can communicate as well as some of the higher-end boards would. And then we're also gonna see how it fares with some higher-end RAM. So this is 4,133 megahertz RAM, which is definitely going to throw up a lot of problems and quite a few boards. This may well be the same. Is this board going to be upgradable to a nice high-end rig in the future, or is it going to be a little bit limiting? Let's start with our CPU then, shall we? By, of course, dropping it in place with no force. While I definitely have seen compatibility issues with RAM in this situation, it is quite rare these days, even on Ryzen boards. But the problem is that the RAM itself has these rated speeds, and they have like a memory profile baked in so the motherboard will read that profile if you enable it of course and then it will actually set all of the settings to match up with the RAM but the problem is a lot of motherboards especially I imagine this pre BIOS update isn't gonna like fast RAM and it doesn't really quite know how to work I guess and timings and things you enable this profile and then your PC just won't boot and you'll have to reset the CMOS which isn't a big deal, but it's certainly not very user friendly. The thing is though, while that will definitely be interesting to test, it's not even something I have in my own personal rig, because I think 3600 megahertz at the moment is the, not even the sweet spot, it's the high end sweet spot for gaming and CPU performance, because anything above that doesn't tend to make too much difference. However, the SSD I would wager is gonna be a little bit more of a big deal, because I would wager, personally, that there are gonna be games that will actually require an SSD like this for like the full functionality. So if you're finding that you're a little bit limited with your bandwidth, while it is probably gonna be okay for 95% of the games, if you're wanting to play like the next next gen game, like, I don't know, Cyberpunk 3077 in 20 years time, in the future, you might find that it does make a fair old difference. The thing that I've just realized as I screw this into place is that actually this SSD costs more than this entire motherboard. Look, by a fair bit, it's probably what, like 40% more expensive? But there you go, this is what your completed motherboard combo will look like. And as you can see, there's really not that much there at all. Enough mucking about though, let's actually get a system built up. This is the P500A from Fantex, but obviously this does have USB-C on the front panel, which you wouldn't be able to use here. Come on baby, in you go. In you go. It's not a bad looking motherboard once you've got everything else in there. I mean, color scheme wise, it's pretty neutral, but there's a little bit of accenting going on there, which I really like. I'm pretty, uh, pretty vocal these days about how all motherboards tend to look the same, but at least you have a little bit of design on here. Let's move on to the graphics card then, shall we? And I haven't used this one before. This is Zotax 3060 Ti. This looks small. It is small. Here we go. This is actually very different to the uh, the 3070 version of this card, I thought it was going to be the same cooler, but this is actually nice and neat look. This should fit in pretty much all builds, really. And that should be our rig complete. Not looking too bad now, is it? And realistically, what I was trying to do was almost create the rig that you might upgrade to later, because yes, I know it's not really realistic to have like custom cables, super high end RAM, maybe you know, like a 120 pound water cooler and stuff, Elgato capture cards. But if it can support all of these things in the future, then it gives you something to upgrade to. And it does, I guess, give you a nice path to save some money in the first instance, but then obviously have something that you can be super proud of in the end game, really. I mean, you could water cool this if you really wanted to. I've never seen a water cooled PC with a 100 pound motherboard before, but there's a first time for everything. Future video idea. Here we go. Oh, it's doing something. The fans are on. Looking pretty swish. We've got some error LEDs, but hopefully those will disappear in just a second. I need to plug the monitor in, of course I do. First boot unsuccessful. Let's try again. So we've got a CPU and DRAM LED lit at the same time. So maybe it is just as simple as trying out some new RAM, I guess. 
I did say I expected it to work first time, but I told you the problems do exist. Let's try some 3200 megahertz Vengeance Pro. I mean, if this board doesn't work, that would be a complete waste of time, wouldn't it? Oh, oh, it's doing something. There we go. Aha, that looks better. It's thinking about it, maybe. Well, the lights have gone out, but it still says no signal. Ah, hey, yes, yes. See, now that is the thing, right? This is the thing with Ryzen. Honestly, it is still a little bit unpredictable when it comes to the first boot. So, so be calm is my advice. Somewhat mild panic over then. Let's actually have a look at the BIOS. So you can see, there you go, version 1.1 on the BIOS. RAM speed is running at 2133, so a lot lower than its rated one. So we have to go into the OC tweaker and actually set that to be its full speed. But I want to update this BIOS actually for a second. And we'll go update to hopefully run on version 1.7. Let's hope we don't get a power cut. Let's actually load up this XMP profile though on this Vengeance RAM and see if we can get this to boot. Oh, we've booted into, <laughs> we've booted into the wrong thing there. That's not what I wanted to do at all. The Wi-Fi seems to certainly work as well as we update our Nvidia drivers. Interestingly, it does seem that the Wi-Fi speed is definitely reduced compared to some of the higher end boards. It is indeed. I've just tested that computer on the same Wi-Fi and we're getting about 310. Whereas on here, we're getting anywhere from around about 70 to 80. You do get some software with this, however. So here you can see we've got performance mode, standard, and then power saving. We've got a little bit of an OC tweaker as well. So you can adjust some of the Ryzen settings on the fly, which is nice. I wouldn't expect to be able to push this that far, but it may well be worth a go. System information, so you can see everything that's going on. But then for me, it's all about this fantastic tuning. They seem to have uh, understood my sense of humor here. And there is a fan test that you can just say start and then it will automatically tune everything for you, which is pretty good. Auto apply when the program starts. And then it was at this point that everything started to go a little bit wrong. I mean, I mean everything really. My camera decided to run out of storage. My other camera decided to run out of battery. Then my microphone also ran out of battery, which is why you've got benchmark markers here today, but he sounds a little bit sad. I was unable to get the Elgato capture card to work, but I think that this isn't gonna be a bandwidth limitation because I've had this problem on loads of different systems. And unfortunately, the way I normally get around it is to just move it to a different slot, but obviously you can't do that on this board because there aren't any more. In terms of things like performance though, I was actually very pleasantly surprised because the Cinebench score came in pretty much normal, exactly what you'd expect which is fantastic and it shows that the CPU performance was performing as it should. Gaming performance as well you can see here there's some lovely control footage and the RTX 3060 Ti with this CPU is a perfect pairing like honestly the two work so well together. It's not the highest end setup in the world and the CPU might hold you back in some games but for what you're probably going to be using this for honestly it's fantastic. Really does come highly recommended no issues here. It was at this point that I decided to get an adapter out of my drawer and another NVMe SSD to test out PCI Gen 3 performance. And this was pretty much flawless. I mean, this is a KC2500 and we got very good read and write speeds. So this was clearly working as intended. But then it got even stranger when we moved over to the SSD that was actually our boot drive, that Samsung 980 Pro, because we were clearly getting PCI Gen 4 performance when it comes to the read speeds. I mean, this blew me away. It was pretty much bang on the money. But then the write speeds were being very consistently funny. I mean, way lower than they should be. So this is clearly just a bug in the system somewhere, but I was unable to fix it. I would say that a lot of these problems are down to the motherboard. I mean, the Wi-Fi, for instance, is definitely down to the motherboard. That's, that's silly. It's almost not worth having and then just buying something separately. But when it comes to the compatibility issues, I don't know, maybe time will tell. That BIOS update certainly helped the RAM, but will it help the rest of the system? I don't know. What this motherboard is all about is to give you all of the features that you need, bring the cost as far down as possible, and then pretty much chuck everything else out that, I don't know, some people will have and others won't. The main thing is that the CPU support seems to be as good as I could realistically expect in terms of performance. I don't think you're gonna see a huge difference between this and say like a Strix board, for instance. It's a very good all-round motherboard then. Just be aware of its limitations, mainly being that if you do want to go for 5000 series Ryzen, you are going to need to have a chip on hand to do the update yourself or find some sort of way around the problem because you know, you might find that you get a motherboard and it's just not the right up-to-date BIOS. Maybe if you're watching this video in a year or so, you'll be more confident in picking it up and 
thinking that we'll have an up-to-date BIOS, but it is going to be a risk. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this one though. Will you be picking up the super cheap Phantom Gaming or will you be looking at something else? I would absolutely love to hear from you. If you do want to check out current pricing, you can find that with my Amazon affiliate links listed down below. And of course, while you're down there, don't forget to check out Netgear's awesome Nighthawk Mesh. With one router and two nodes included in the MK63 pack, you can get incredible Wi-Fi coverage even with a larger home. That's up to 3,250 square feet. Wi-Fi 6 manages bandwidth more effectively across all of your devices in the home, so you can fire up the TV in the living room, the console for kids, and then of course the PC in the gaming den all at the same time without too much strain on your network. More devices online, smoother streaming. Check out this epic step towards next-gen networking today with that link down below. A massive thank you to me for actually supplying this review sample. If you like the fact that I can actually spend my own money on making these videos, then please smash that like button and get subscribed. It makes the world a difference and it genuinely does make videos like this possible. So thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. I'll see you in the next one.